Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. Today I'm speaking with Dr. William Seeds. Dr. Seeds is an orthopedic surgeon in Ashtabula, Ohio. Dr. Seeds did his medical school training at the University of Cincinnati. He then completed an orthopedic residency at St. Luke Roosevelt Hospital, which is a hospital associated with Columbia Physicians and Surgeons, uh, Columbia University Physicians and Surgeons. Uh, he also did extra training in uh, uh, sports medicine and total joint replacement at Christ Hospital in Cincinnati. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Randy, thank you for having me today. Uh, Bill, I understand that you're, you're also the uh, team physician for multiple uh, sports teams throughout Northeast Ohio and also have recently been named the uh, sports physician for the Great Center in Geneva, Ohio. Uh, could, could you tell us a little bit about what that center is and what you'll be doing there? Yes, Randy, uh, we're real excited about our presence in the uh, Great Center here in Geneva, Ohio. It is an indoor center which hosts uh, indoor track with the largest indoor track and field um, arena in the country and with indoor volleyball, basketball, tennis, gymnastics, and indoor soccer, and, and a, a combination of indoor uh, uh, leagues as far as uh, flag football and uh, softball and uh, those type of uh, uh, activities. So uh, we've been very fortunate to uh, set up a, uh, a tremendous relationship with the Great Center, and uh, we are in charge of uh, supplying trainers for the facility. and. Uh, taking care of their athletes, which range from grade school to uh, through uh, high school uh, to the uh, collegiate athlete and to the uh, pre-Olympic um, uh, athletes as they bring in NCAA uh, um, competition. And uh, they will be also uh, hosting uh, pre-preliminary uh, Olympic events also in uh, this facility. So uh, we're, we're very uh, fortunate to have this in Northeast Ohio and it is a premier facility uh, that we are partnering with. Well, what I thought we would talk about today is, is, is your approach to the management of the young athlete. You know, I think that, that sports play such a great role in American society and especially in, uh, you know, grade school all the way up to college uh, and, and beyond, of course. But I think that, that the, the athletes that are uh, junior high level, high school level, uh, it is such a big part of, of, of those kids' lives, uh, and unfortunately, injuries are a part of those kids' lives as well. So I thought we would start out this, hopefully, a series of discussions about the young athlete and really look at, at what you as an orthopedic surgeon see as some of the, the more challenging aspects of dealing with, with children and teenagers uh, and young adults, uh, and what what makes those folks different than some of the adult injuries that we take care of. So tell us a little bit about, about what you see as the major problems in that age group. Well, Randy, I think this is an excellent topic uh, for, the, uh, for uh, 2010 to discuss as far as the uh, sporting activities of our, our, our younger athletes and not only those activities, but the dynamics that work with their, uh, their parents and their coaches. Uh, we've seen a tremendous change in the last 10 to 15 years in the focus of these younger athletes where uh, they're training specific to that sport in a, a year-round fashion. They're playing summer baseball, spring baseball, winter baseball, and they're not going they're not going through those phases like we used to see where you played one sport during the spring one port, sport in the summer one sport in the winter where you were you, you could look at it as you were cross training you were using different muscle groups different joints and um, you weren't getting into the aspects of what we see of what we would call overtraining or overuse uh, syndromes that we're seeing in our our younger athletes at a at a very high level that we did not experience before, and that has become a very serious problem all over the country. Uh, not not just endemic here to northeastern Ohio, but as with this uh, facility I just mentioned, the great facility. You know, we we have 
the, the facilities now where these children, no matter where they are or young adults in the country, they can practice indoors and outdoors and uh, continue their sporting events pretty much year round. So it, it's really changed the dynamics of, of how we are looking at these, these injuries and, and what we're seeing in our, in our younger, uh, younger adult and uh, uh, preteen athletes. Well, you know, it's it's always a concern, I think, uh, amongst physicians and, and sometimes parents that children are, are a little bit more prone to these overuse type injuries because we're dealing with, with uh, children with growing skeletons and even teenagers with growing skeletons. And the stresses that come from this focus on one sport just over and over and over again um, I think we have to also worry about those overuse injuries as well as some of the injuries that you see. I mean, people are used to seeing sprained ankles, uh, knee ligament injuries, shoulder dislocations, shoulder injuries, even sometimes fractures, uh, but these are discrete injuries. I, I think with what you're describing here, um, the whole risk of overuse uh, type problems that arise over a period of time and may arise subtly, not like you've just uh, you know had a clipping injury in football or something like that and had a discrete injury but things that that begin to show up over a period of time with with subtle symptoms symptoms that you know maybe are brushed off maybe the coach brushes it off maybe the patient brushes it off and maybe the parent sort of just brush it off and and suggest that that the child just continue pushing um, is that a problem? How big a problem is it? And, and how do you deal with that, that issue? Well, it, it, it's absolutely a problem on all levels, on the athletic, on the athlete, on the parents, and on the coaches. And the, you know, the problem is it, it's, it's a, any sporting activity requires a recovery time uh, in all our athletes. You need to recover from your activity. And with the continued activity throughout the year, uh, these, these uh, athletes don't make the time for recovery and they keep pushing to improve and to continue to train those sports specific muscles to where they're fatiguing themselves and actually working against themselves and creating these overuse problems. And in, in these sporting in, in our sporting uh, world presently, you know, that the kids not only want to perform, but the coaches are, are just as much part of trying to recognize these problems as they're, you know, they, they say they form a young baseball team and they have a team that's doing well in the spring and then they develop a traveling team that travels in the summer and it's this, it's the, it may be the same coach or a different or the same system where they try to carry these kids through and keep them playing on the same teams. Uh, and, and they all, you know, it, it, it gets to be more of a, of a, the, the coaches enable some of this and, and want to keep their teams progressing, you know, through these, uh, these tournaments and competitions. Uh, the kids feel much more of a, a loyalty to their coaches and teams because they they feel a, they're an integral part of this. And then the parents become part of this too because they, you know, they, they've invested so much time and energy into the, into getting their, their kids into the program, on the team, um, transportation, um, you know, all of the, everything that's needed to, to make it work. And they, they, they actually become part of that, 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 uh, that team, if you want to call it. Um, and it's, uh, it's an interesting dynamic because you know everybody's kind of working together to keep that flow and to develop that player to the next level and 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 everybody wants to succeed with that and and sometimes we, you know we we forget that these nagging injuries as they continue uh, and as you and I and and most of my colleagues will recognize you know that some of these overuse symptoms syndromes can uh, can become devastating problems where they end these careers uh, before they even get through high school. And uh, th that's, uh, it's a very tough thing to sit down and discuss with the, uh, 
with the parents and, and the uh, child or the preteen or the teenager or even the, the, long, the young collegiate athlete where you're trying to make decisions that are best suited for them lifelong versus that short period of time uh, that they're in that sport. Well, it seems like there's several different issues here. One is, is as you've, you, you've, you've mentioned, the whole notion of, of how you train and the conditioning that's required in order to, to try to keep a, a young athlete uh, healthy. Then there's, there's also the attention, I think, that you mentioned to uh, when an injury begins to present itself, especially one of these overuse injuries, how you manage the early signs and how you manage, um, I would say, the early treatment before this becomes uh, really an orthopedic surgery problem or a problem that's going to require some significant intervention. And then I guess the third part is, is really how you manage injuries once they become established and, and need to have some sort of, of active intervention more than just sort of um, adjusting uh, activity levels, adjusting conditioning schedules and that sort of stuff. So give me some pointers in terms of if I'm a parent, for example, or if I'm a, a teenager um, with these problems starting to arise, um, what should I be aware of? When should I start to uh, look at, at, at consulting with a, a trainer, a sports physician, or someone to try to get some advice, uh, maybe changing what I'm doing? Sure. Well, I, I think those are, those are really valid points you brought up and you nicely orchestrated that, that outline that, that essentially touches on everything here. And I, I feel that the, the problems we see are a lot of these problems are self-treated initially to be, because no one, you know, no one wants to come to see the physician where the physician may be telling you, hey, look, you got to do something different. I mean, they're, everybody's initially trying to treat their own problems. And, um, and that that is part of the issue here. It's yes, if if we can get to if if an orthopedic surgeon can get to these these early injuries, you know, early knee, shoulder, elbow, ankle injuries, we can assist these people in getting back a lot sooner and and, and giving them the outlook of of how we can avoid problems in the future. And you know, initially, I think the symptoms of 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 treating initial soft tissue injuries with ice and elevation are, are all valid initial starts in, in, in trying to self-treat. But the problem comes where this becomes a continual event. You know, you're, the patient continues to have pain um, after the activity. They have to ice down all the, you know, after every event. Um, and it takes them a couple of days to get back to at least where they can practice at a, at a, at a normal level. Um, and then it gets even more worrisome when they're actually experiencing pain during the event. So it's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard thing to discern uh, with, to figure out with the, uh, the parents and the coaches uh, as far as, well, when, when do we need to seek that, adva that advice of the trainer or the, uh, or the uh, physician? And, and that's why we, we absolutely believe in supplying trainers to our athletic events and our facilities because our trainers can get right to that injury when it occurs. We can administer the ice, the elevation, we can give the advice to the family and the patient and the coach all at the same time. Here's the plan of attack. Here's where we're going to go with this. This is these are the these are the symptoms that we should see improve over the next 48 hours. If we don't start seeing these things resolve, then we've got some issues uh, that that we need to discuss. And that's kind of the rule of thumb we use with any initial injury is if within 48 hours, if you're not getting close back to the activity level you were before and you're still experiencing uh, some type of uh, swelling or pain uh, or a combination of those issues, then, then there's probably just more than a, than a, a smaller issue occurring and, and you don't want to set yourself up for those long-term problems. Are there any specific injuries that you find are, are more common than others? Are there things that you're seeing over and over again, such as knee injuries or ankle injuries or shoulder injuries, um, that you feel like are particularly problematic for, for different age groups or for specific age groups? Yes, Randy, I, I believe that in looking at that, 
Um, I would categorize them more as sports specific injuries. What's more common in a particular sport? And, and I'm just going to pick randomly here uh, a few examples. If, if you take, let's start with baseball. Uh, our, our most typical problems we see in, in baseball in our younger um, grade school and, uh, and high school or, or pre-high school athletes are upper extremity injuries that work with the shoulder and elbow. And these are issues that are all focused on the throwing mechanics of the young athlete. Uh, we don't typically see a lot of injuries with, with batting or, or running the bases except for more with ankle injuries as they slide into a, into a base. That's usually where we see the ankle injuries that can be sprains and strains or sometimes fractures. But the more common injuries in baseball are the shoulder and elbow injuries where they're overuse injuries that have to do with uh, the mechanics of, of their throwing and also the, you know, the constant throwing. How many times are they throwing that ball during the week, during the year? Um, and so, so those issues may be more specific to baseball. If we look at, and, and the same thing goes with softball for females, um, same mechanics of, of throwing and uh, as we discussed sliding. And we uh, would say as far as uh, uh, basketball goes, those are more ankle and knee injuries, um, more ankle sprains and strains and knee injuries in the, in the younger kids with the uh, jumping um, we see the ligamentous injuries of the knee. Uh, so, so these are more common in the lower extremity. And uh, we actually see probably more female injuries as opposed to male injuries in basketball in, of the knee. And these have more to do with some of the uh, aspects of uh, the, the athleticism of the, um, of the uh, female athletes as they're growing, how there are some issues there with uh, the... Uh, mechanics of the activity, um, which we're learning more and more about here through our research. The uh, we if we looked at um, volleyball, uh, that's more of a more ankle injuries, and uh, that gets into a whole issue of wearing ankle braces uh, prophylactically uh, for all athletes in volleyball, and that's a very very um, hot debated topic in um, high school and collegiate athletes. There's, uh, if we look at um, football, football are more injuries we see of the knee and ankle again. So you're, you're seeing more sports specific, I would say, than uh, just kind of generally, you know, putting a category around, around everything. It just depends on the sport and the activity and, and the relationship, uh, you know, to, to that sport. Well, now you, you mentioned, um, what you're doing at the Great Center, uh, including on-site trainers, very well well-trained trainers, athletic trainers. Um, what about physical therapy? Are you are you utilizing physical therapy on-site there at the uh, at the training facility where uh, you know people who are or, or patients who may come into the facility um, either with practice injuries or or uh, aches and pains after practice can be evaluated immediately and given some advice? Yes, well, we, we have our, our, our trainers are there to give the initial advice and, and to start on some initial uh, protocols that we have for, for all, the, all the events as far as uh, uh, post-exercise stretching and, um, and, and activity such as that with ice and, and so forth. The as far as if something progresses over a 48 hour period, then that's when the physician will get involved uh, as far as uh, we'll, we'll do an initial workup. And then usually we get that patient then into a therapy program that could go anywhere from a week. It could be a one-time teaching. Um, it could be up to uh, four to six weeks. It's, it's just relative to you know what was the initial injury how long have their symptoms been, and if if they're requiring further intervention after that initial trainer um, and patient encounter, and our trainers do a fantastic job of of keeping up with the families. It's it's all about communication. You know, they're there they're there at the initial injury. Uh, they're there with the coach, the parents, and the player at that point in time, and and that's crucial. 
and we, we then take them through the steps, we follow up with them, and all of that communication uh, is key uh, for the better outcome of that patient and, and getting further care if, if it's necessary. You know, it's interesting because when, in my generation, when, uh, when I played high school athletics, uh, a trainer was usually another student that probably did much, much, not much more than, than basic first aid, if that. And I don't necessarily think that a lot of trainers in that day and age had a lot of, of advanced training over just normal first aid. And, and normally they answered to the coach. This whole notion of, of educating trainers and actually creating a network where the trainers are networked in with physical therapists and orthopedic surgeons who provide oversight and really instant communication so that if a trainer, a well-trained trainer, um, identifies a problem, uh, this day and age, it's generally a pretty quick referral um, to someone who can then reevaluate that injury and begin treatment fairly quickly, and, and if necessary, all the way up to the orthopedic surgeon. I think that's a huge, huge benefit that athletes have today and a major shift in the last, let's say, let, let's be, be easy and say 35 years. Yeah, a absolutely, Randy. And, and the, for instance, in, in, at my facilities, uh, our trainers spend well over six months to a year with the orthopedic surgeon following the surgeon around with his office visits. They go to the operating room to see all of the common procedures that are done. Um, they work in the physical therapy department with these patients to follow them along. So, so their, their training is, uh, I, I believe, is... Uh, is why we're able to perform as well as we can with our patients because they're they're in our routine. They know they know the protocols. They've seen all of the different patients as they present. They followed them through surgery. If they've gone to surgery, they followed them through therapy. So that network is very tight. And um, as you said, it it makes all the difference in in the communication to the. Uh, to the coaches, the families, and and to us as the physicians, and and the I have to tell you the um, the the families uh, initially that that confidence that they that they uh, feel and see initially uh, weighs in heavily throughout that whole process. Well, let's let's move on and talk a little bit about the family, and you know I think that that parents need to understand how to assess their 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 children in terms of these problems we've been talking about you know overuse injuries complaints when they come home uh, from practice um, when should a family get involved and start maybe contacting the trainer contacting a physical therapist or maybe contacting the coach and and begin to sort of say you know we think there's a problem here because clearly the the, the athletes may not be expressing some of these things to the coach because they want to play. Athletes always want to play and normally if they're having uh, problems that might uh, affect their performance, they're going to probably not be real forthcoming in terms of reporting some of these things. So I think, I think it, it, it's, it's good that families are involved, but I think we ought to give parents a little bit of guideline here in terms of when it's a good idea uh, to, to perhaps step into that situation and perhaps get an evaluation or maybe escalate the concern a little bit so that the, the coach understands and, and the, the child understands that uh, um, this is not something they should just ignore. Yeah, I, I think you bring up uh, some very valid points here, Randy, and, and this is an excellent discussion in, in talking about that, that parent uh, relationship with the physician and, and the patient and the coach and and what I have found uh, is is a I believe a hundred percent reliable as far as the the involved uh, parents and the injuries of their children I I find I, and this is my discussion I usually have as I said about you know if there's an initial injury if there are problems after a 48 hour period where you've elevated you've iced the extremity You've taken all those precautions of resting, icing, 
um, in, in elevation and compressing the injury, you know, with a wrap or something at that time. That's that RICE scenario, R-I-C-E. If you followed those, that kind of a protocol for that 48 hour period of time and, and there's still problems afterwards, then it's, it's most prudent at that time, I believe, to get your, uh, to, to get involved and get some, some input in either further talking to the coach, um, about maybe having the trainer to take a look at this or, or getting into the orthopedic surgeon to get an initial consultation. Now, what I, what I do tell, talk to the parents about and, and which, they'll they always will identify with is you know the parents know they know the activity level of their child out on that field and they know before anybody else even before the coach if there's a little change in the way they're playing and I tell the parents that if you notice it that they're not playing at that same level and it's something that goes on more than more than just one or two games or events or practices then there, there's something that's probably occurring there that you need to investigate. Um, and, and they're very attuned to that. When you sit down with any of these parents, they'll tell you, you know, I knew something was going on there and I, I needed, I should have, I should have acted on it. They'll all, they all parents can re, can tell you, they can see those little differences, that little misstep, that, that, you know, the ball speed changing, the accuracy changing, uh, that, that jump shots not the same uh, they're they're not playing with the same intensity they know there's something there then the coach is kind of a little bit behind that but the coach can recognize those things also so you've got to start that kind of dialogue in your head um, and, and then you know then we take it to the other side of this of where you know we have to educate the the parents and the coaches just as much as uh, as we do the patients that Sometimes, guys, taking care of these injuries now is in the best interest of these patients now because you don't want these problems in the future. You don't want to have something where you're going to have to tell your child, look, you know, that this high school isn't looking good right now or you're not going to get this college scholarship if you're looking in, in, in that type of realm because you're not going to be able to, to compete. And uh, those are some real issues that, that you need to, to discuss uh, with with the parents and, and, and you need to get the coaches involved too. And I'll tell you, the coaches have come a long way. Uh, we're very fortunate here in Northeastern Ohio where we, we see a lot of really involved coaching that, uh, where they're, they're very cognizant of these problems and their, their early recognition, they, they realize, realize how important that is. And, uh, they've been an integral part in working with us as the with the trainers and the physicians and educating the the parents because you know it's interesting in that dynamic sometimes the coach's word means a lot more than the doctor's word does and uh, as, as far as that uh, family dynamic and and so we do depend a lot on the coaches in, in in recognizing these things and supporting us in in our recommendation well it sure seems like that the key is 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 the type of system that you've set up there in Northeastern Ohio. And that is that, that very accessible network where rather than having to, to go somewhere, uh, make an appointment with an orthopedic surgeon you may not know, uh, you guys have really taken it to the, to the sport itself and really made access uh, very easy. So when you have that type of access, it, it definitely makes this decision to to sort of pull the trigger, so to speak, to, to really evaluate a problem rather than continue to put it off because you, you don't know how to access the expertise that you need. And, and I think the attention to sports, not only in orthopedic surgery, but in family medicine, for example, and the, the focus and the, the increased understanding of some of these injuries among the family practitioners has really uh, helped the situation as well. Yes, I, I believe you're... I... I, I absolutely agree with that, and I, I think it's all, it's the comfort level that those parents and coaches have initially, right off the bat, if if that trainer is, is or, or physician is able to be there at the time of the event, it, 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 it changes the whole playing field. And it, it's also access. Uh, we, we, we absolutely believe in getting in as soon as possible, and we, we have a sports line where if they're athletic, say it doesn't get through the trainer, we have another way that the families 
or the coaches can get immediate attention to these uh, young athletes. And, and we try to dispel that misconception that, geez, if I call a doctor, it's going to take me a couple of weeks or a month to get in. Uh, we, we try to eliminate that, that discrepancy immediately and letting them know, you know letting the, uh, the, uh, the coaches and the, uh, the families know that that's not going to be an issue. We, we want those children in. We want those teenagers. We want to get to them right away so we aren't dealing with problems down the road. Well, I'm sure people are, are, are intrigued with this whole concept and uh, those that don't have as well developed a system uh, as you've uh, obviously been developing there in northeastern Ohio will probably want to hear more about this. And, and I'm hoping that, that you'll be able to join us for some more uh, discussions concerning young athletes and, and hopefully we can get into some very specific problems that, that you've mentioned already in, in a general way, but hopefully we can talk um, in more detail, in more depth about some specific injuries in further conversations so that uh, uh, we can give parents and athletes and coaches some background and some information on, on how to deal with some of these very specific injuries. So I want to thank you for joining me today and invite you back for, for a, a, a few other discussions if you're, if you're willing. Absolutely. Uh, I, would, I would love to do that. Well, thanks so much for today's discussion. As we close, is there anything else that you would like either coaches, parents, or athletes to know that we have not discussed today? I, the only thing I really want to just emphasize is that we're, we're all – you know, there, there is no one, we're, we're all focused on the same thing, and that's it's getting that better outcome for the athlete. And the more we work as a team, the, the better the product is going to be for that athlete. And, and that's the bottom line. Well, I think that's good advice. And uh, I appreciate you being here today. Look forward to talking to you in the future. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.